morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to call the July 15th, 2024 Crest Hill City Council meeting to order. If everyone will please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Karen? Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Metvin? Here. Darrell Jefferson? Here. Claudia Gazal? Here. Tina Oberlin? Present. Mark Zapiti? Here. Nate Albert? Joe Kubel? Here. Okay, for the record, I did receive an email from Alderman Albert. He is unavailable this evening, so he is excused uh, for tonight's meeting. And just a quick announcement. There is a very good chance of some severe weather this evening. Um, so I'm asking the police chief to keep his eye on the radar. If there, the weather gets to the point where we need to be in a safer place, we'll stop the meeting immediately and we'll all head together down to the basement area. Okay, before, uh, before the city council, you have before you the minutes of the city council meeting held on July 1st, 2024. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Jefferson for the approval of the minutes of the City Council meeting held on July 1st, 2024. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Joe Kubel? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Jennifer Methvin? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. yes. Motion carried. Okay, moving on Excuse to. Excuse me, just one. Did I not hear? Did you call Glenn? No, Conklin? I didn't. Oh, for the attendance? For attendance. Yeah, Glenn Conklin for attendance. Brother. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on, to, moving on to our city attorney, Mike Steff. Good evening, Mike. I got it. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> I have one agenda item. Uh, it's to approve a resolution. Uh, for a forensic consulting services agreement by and between the city of Crest Hill and Sikich LLC uh, for personnel matters that were discussed previously in executive session. The agreement is in your packet. So moved. Second. We have a motion, motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alder Person Oberlin to approve a resolution approving a forensic consulting service agreement by and between the city of Crest Hill, County, Illinois, and Sikich LLC. Questions or comments? Uh, yes. I just have a comment. I'm sorry. Can I go ahead? Oh, yes. go ahead. Um, I just want to clarify that even though uh, the majority of uh, us are very conservative about spending tax for your money, it is really important to hire this company for the better future and transparency of this city. Uh, due to mismanaging taxpayer money, time theft, and illegal searches. I just want to make that clear because uh, since the agenda is posted online and um, I got a few questions, but I know I don't want it to answer us, so I'm going to just make the statement publicly that it's really important uh, to take this measurement at this point. Go ahead. Okay. I was just uh, wondering, I know we had man mentioned talking in executive session about putting a cap as to how much we were going to spend. And there was nothing in here on that. Are we not going to have a cap as the amount as to what we're going to spend with this company? Or uh, this is the agreement to have the representative of Sikich come in to get from you an executive session. Oh, okay. The parameters of what you want. This okay. is merely right. for them to come in and speak to you in executive that session. That's my next question. If the decision is made to go forward, that next resolution and or agreement will have uh, all of the necessary parameters once they give us a, a quote for that service. Okay, I was just going to ask that other question of, you know, when they were going to come in because it was talk of them coming in to talk to us. Uh, we're working on scheduling now. Okay, real good. Thank you. Roll call, Karen. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Methvin? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, resolution number 1244. Aside from that, I don't have any other agenda items, but would be happy to entertain any questions that the council may have. Any questions of city attorney? I hope you had a wonderful birthday, sir. I did, and a nice vacation as well. It's good to be back. See all your smiling faces. Okay, thanks, Mike. Uh, moving on to our city administrator, 
Tony Graff. Good evening, Tony. Happy okay, birthday, Eric. Thank you. We have a great, great night tonight. Uh, at the very beginning, we are looking at an um, update from Ron Metzger in regards to some potential retail at Plainfield and Gaylord Road. There's um, some freestanding lots there. Uh, looks like uh, Ron's little report is uh, Scooter's Coffee drive through uh, possibly a few other um, multi-tenant commercial buildings uh, would be in that location. Uh, the next thing in my report was the Grand Prairie Crossing. The very first board meeting was conducted on July 2nd. All board members were present, all six communities. Uh, they did their basic groundwork for the, the president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and they approved uh, the project manager agreement uh, with Joliet, and then there was some other agreements that they were all basically like housekeeping, what I would call. Um, Stateville Correctional, we did get contacted by some, um, the engineering firm that was hired to do some due diligence on just some site assessment, but not going really on the property for that, more uh, looking at where is the pipes and uh, the sewer, the water, uh, looking for ownership from who owns what side of the roads and and uh, the water tower. So Ron and I had a nice Zoom meeting with the company. Um, in about two to three weeks, they will get back to us. To, they have to give a report back to the Department of Corrections. Um, so at least we're getting a little more information that they're doing some due diligence uh, with the engineers. The main purpose that they were tasked with is to see if they could find the most open space to where the facility could fit in green space area, uh, which we know there's a lot of good green space out there, but the, there is some floodplain issues um, and there's environmentals and of course there's a lot of, um, I would say things that are in the ground, they're gonna have to find out what's there. But so they wanna to try to get the, uh, which is where the corn grows, more or less, is probably the best location for the new facility, which uh, I think in our interest, we've always wanted them to stay away from that 200 acres uh, by Division and Weber, uh, so that could stay available for possible commercial, commercial mixed use in the future. Um, our job announcements updates. Well, tonight you have the, the Public Works Director. We're looking at professional outreach for that. Community Development Director, we'll talk further on that in executive session about the final candidate update. Uh, we reposted re again for the HR manager and the Public Works Maintenance Workers. Um, they've gone through all their applicants and they've created a list uh, for civil service. So hopefully we'll be able to get two more people hired because there's two openings right now for replacements with Public Works. Uh, the old City Hall did some work our, our crew did uh, with the landscaping cleanup and we'll start working on a few other things after what happens with the, the vote tonight. Mosquito spraying. Um, I know Mike uh, sent me back a, a quick email in regards to what the weather tonight. You haven't got any notice yet if they're canceled yet, Mike? No, <clears throat> it's still on, but I uh, have my phone with me just in case. Okay. And the monument signs, uh, the one that everyone probably goes around and sees most of the time is on Weber and McGilvery. Uh, the lighting and landscape and restoration will all take uh, at least another two or three weeks, correct, Ryan? Correct. Uh, the new city hall, got a new location. We'll, we'll show you next Monday. Take a picture of it up there. I think it's uh, it could fit. If you look, look at it, it did fit on the side of the wall where you guys showed me where that pillar was. Um, so I'll get some more photographs and We'll look at it again next Monday. Uh, water meter replacement project. Uh, they had a good staff meeting this morning with, with the contractor. Uh, it looks like we are coming up with a, a strategy of how we can make that September date uh, for water meters. I think we're down to about 60 meters still that we have to get into the homes to get them replaced. Uh, it was nice to see it. The, uh, our contractor and our staff all, all together in one meeting uh, working out uh, how to communicate better and, and get the work orders. Uh, we're going to generate some overtime still. 
uh, some of the overtime because it's going to be it's our our crew doing the replacements now, not the contractor's crew. So some of these are going to be on Saturday. So we'll be creating some overtime probably over the next three or four weeks uh, to try to get this project uh, done by our target date, which was September 1st. Uh, nothing new to report on the, uh, the West Plant, the Lockport Township. We have that on the agenda tonight. Everything was approved by their board uh, for the intergovernment agreement. Uh, the crime lab, nothing new on the crime lab. Uh, and then there's some events coming up. You all make those announcements later with the citywide garbage uh, sale. Uh, and then meet at the Souza Park event. I think that's on Wednesday at 6 p.m., if I remember that right. And uh, a call from the White Oak Library, talk to the director over there. Uh, thanks for the lead from, from Nate. Uh, the fall festival is going to be September 29th. Uh, and they'll be doing the overflow using our parking lot, which I think would be great. Uh, the police department's looking to move the national night out to under another name called Neighbors Night Out, sort of taking our theme, City of Neighbors, and they've moved it over to September 4th. Uh, one of the reasons is the uh, other times in November, I mean in, in August, uh, there's a lot of other festivals going on and trying to get some other agencies and that to come over. We're in a lot of competition. So I think it was a great idea that they're going to move it over. And I, I think that would be uh, September 4th. Sounds like a great date. Anything else? Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions. How about your two agenda items? Two agenda items. Oh, the uh, first one is the Outreach rec Recruitment Services by GovHR. That's for the Director of Public Works. We're going to have, um, we requested services after a work session, talked talk for a few minutes. What's our next step with our Public Works Director? We know we're on a time clock <laughs> with, with Mike that probably by September, October, he'll be um, out of his hours. He's able to, uh, eligible to work under his, under his pension. So we'll we're, uh, move forward with that to go for the outreach. Uh, and then the recruitment services for the city administrator's position. You have the uh, pack in the packet, it's $24,000. I did ask them to take a closer look with that $24,000 because some of the work doesn't have to be repeated. We already have a brochure together. They've already met with the council uh, back in January of last year. Um, do we really need to have, spend more, more of their time to have them come out and meet again. Uh, what they did suggest was still to do uh, a virtual and do a more of a workshop session on the trends of recruitment right now, especially in with our timeline. Um, August is getting this started. You're going to go all the way into mid-November, maybe late October, by the time you'll, you'll find a candidate and offer, offer the job. It's kind of a area where it needs probably to have further, further discussion because, you know, that's six months of, of a contract because of the mayor's election. Uh, you can only do the contract up to, the, up to May 5th. So they have a little concern uh, with an expectation that they would like to have a full, more full discussion with, with the council um, in regards to trying to move this along. And also, let's try to set the parameters with negotiations and when we do find a candidate, maybe have that pre-parameters already set of what would be acceptable to offer to, to a candidate. So we cut that time down. Uh, and it was nobody's, nobody to fault in regards to negotiations, but there was a lot of negotiations going back and forth with, with the candidate versus you know with the city council. So they, they believe maybe we could tighten that up a little better and have those, um, you sort of know what you want, you know what you're going to want to spend, and this will help also with recruitment. So they're offering to do a virtual either on the 22nd or the 29th. I think the 29th is a date for the uh, skittish to come in. So maybe try to shoot for the 22nd. They have a, have a like it's a one hour presentation and discussion. Uh, this is op open meeting um, with a uh, HR's you know, expert to come in. Have you asked them if we can get any discount um, 
on the cost since uh, we didn't have the best candidates that they offer us the first time? I did ask them. Uh, I told them we were uh, we were disappointed. You know, council was disappointed in regards to the tier one and tier two uh, candidates. Uh, they gave us a thousand, and they call it repeat customer. And then I went back to them, going, I think we need to have further discussion because I think a lot of the work that's in phase one um, is already done. Uh, but they're concerned that if they shortcut it without having more discussion with the city council. What's your expectation? So if you, you approve this tonight, I would recommend not executing it until you have that first workshop. And then we, we just, and I would tell them you still would like to have further consideration with the cost. So I think uh, in their motion, they could do that to sort of protect us and not spending the whole 24,000 recommending. Don't execute it till after the workshop and see if we get a new price. Well, but if, if it's approved, and they decide after the workshop they don't want, then they're going to have to unapprove it. I would recommend that you not approve it until you know what you're getting. Okay. I mean, but and would that delay the process of them coming here doing the presentation? It, it will because of the long time you know, to August 5th. If we, if we had the following Monday, it would just be a one week delay, but now we got two well, weeks I think because this of this is very important. So we yeah. need to vote for it. And if they can give us a discount, obviously, no matter what we have to do it, but it doesn't hurt to ask the question if we're able to get any discount. I, I did, did ask that, and okay. they did not give us one. Okay, so that means we have to vote for it. Are you so, looking for a motion? So I think the, we need to take item three first, which is the approval of the public works uh, agreement, or director of public works recruitment agreement. Motion will be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alder Person Oberlin, seconded by Alder Little Gazal for the consideration of recruitment contract for Director of Public Works. Questions or comments? And this one is 7000 for the Public Works? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. Roll call, Karen. Jennifer Methvin? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carried. And then with respect to number four would be the approval of the uh, city administrator recruitment services by GovHR. I believe that's 24,000 or is it 23 after the thousand dollar discount? No, it's 24. Okay. Can we approve, can we make a motion to approve it with a, a council that we might alter the price? I mean, is that doable or no? I think you can approve it up to that amount and okay. authorize the oh. city administrator to try to negotiate it down. If you can negotiate it to less, then you've okay, spent so less money than you've authorized. I'll make a motion to approve this up to that amount. I'll okay. second, second. Okay, a motion by Alder Person Oberlin, seconded by Alder Woman Gazal. To approve, approve for city administrator recruitment services by GovHR USA up to $24,000. Questions or comments? I have a comment again. Um, Chief Golden left in October and we took forever to even uh, post the job. That's why we are where we are today. Number two, we have a solution in front of us, Mayor, that you refuse to, to go with the majority of the council on it that can solve the situation until the election. But because you don't wanna go with what the council wish is as the majority, we are where we are today. I see it very difficult for anyone to come at this point knowing that they're gonna have a couple months of a job. But maybe the next step should be, maybe we should look for an interim as well if the full-time um, permit uh, administrator won't be able to make it, maybe we can make an interim at this point. Can we make that possible as well, a request from GovHR? We have an interim now which we're not gonna discuss it here, but we know the majority of the council wants to change, correct? Anybody else have a comment? Yeah, I just feel that to go now and to try to hire somebody with a few months before the election, I don't think someone's gonna wanna come here for a few months and going through all that time, effort, and money being spent. I think we should wait till after the election 
or a month before start the recruitment process so that this way once we get into it we have whoever's going to be seated here as mayor so that that person when we're recruiting them knows okay here's the mayor for the next four years and that they have a job for the next four years that's what I would like to see done anybody else um, is it possible to extend a contract to this person that goes past the election or is everything tied into the Election. It's tied in. Not according to Illinois state statute. It's tied into every mayor's election. Correct, Mike? That's correct. I, I agree with uh, Alderwoman Gazal to post it as an interim, seeing as that we're so close to the election, it would be hard for someone to take that chance, not knowing that they would have employment after the election. But I think uh, in posting of an interim is um, more appropriate at this time. I mean, I will go for both. Anybody else? I didn't hear what he said. I will go for both, the both options, because you never know. Someone might want to come knowing that they're going to do a good job and possibly they have the opportunity to, um, to stay. For the record, I agree with Alderman Dyke. I made those comments several weeks ago also. I think with the timeline that's before us with 10 months to go, it would be best to wait. And I agree with what he made comments in regards to. With that being said, there's no further questions or comments. I would ask for a roll call on the motion and the second, Karen. Thorell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapitti? Yes. Joe Kubo? <clears throat> yes. Scott Dyke? No. Jennifer Metzen? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, anything else, Tony? Come here. Any comments or questions of city administrator? I have a comment for you, Tony. Um, I reached out to you on Friday uh, when I found out from a few people that uh, upper management, a lot of few upper management, the mayor and yourself um, heard about um, the union representative coming here and you said that you heard rumbling. So I Googled the word rumbling and the meaning is you have heard a rumor or about something, correct? Uh, I believe it's very unprofessional as an interim administrator that you should have reached out to us to let us know of this rumbling. We know that the mayor won't do it, uh, but you should have done it uh, as a, a representative to the city and the council as a whole. If uh, you should hear rumbling again, can you please share we, with us to avoid all kind of embarrassment or to be prepared next time? Well, if, if there's a rumor going around, it's a rumor. It's not factual in nature. So I didn't know if it was true or untrue. So. I'm trying to figure out what, how do I notify you about rumors, you know, rumbling, whatever you want to call it. It was a rumor that right. some people were coming to a meeting. Yeah. So. Well, I see a lot of rumors on social media, and I hear about people want to come to city council. I have uh, sent screenshot to the mayor. I've sent a screenshot to the previous city administrator, to uh, many department heads, um, to notify them that hey. There is in case something happening. Um, the whole idea I'm saying this, but we could avoid a lot of things before they come here publicly. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks, Tony. Well, Moving on to our Public Works Department, our Public Works Director, Mike Hewlett. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, City Council. I have one agenda item. It is the approval of pay request number 18 for viscerine construction with direction to send it to the IEPA for approval and disbursement for a total amount of $969,193.95. This covers work uh, performed between June 1st and June 30th of 2024. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by Alder Person Oberlin, seconded by Alder Woman Methvin for approval of pay request number 18 from Vistring Construction Incorporated with direction to send it to the IEPA 
for approval and disbursement for a total amount of $969,193.95. Questions or comments? Roll call. Please, Karen. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zipini? Yes. Joe Kugel? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Meshman? Yes. Jerome Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Motion carried. That is all I have, but I will entertain any questions if there are any. Any questions at Public Works? Yes, I have a question. Um, I find out last uh, meet at the park, uh, the borough wasn't there, the rain borough. And uh, is there a way, can we still do the contract on that because it was missed by the previous uh, uh, city administrator? <coughs> there wasn't a rain barrel there, is that what you're saying? There's no rain barrel, apparently there's no contract for it. We never did the contract. Can you look into it because couple resident, they do prefer to get a discount for it? Yeah, I, yes. I would appreciate that, thank you. Yes. Uh, Mike, I wanna thank you for getting those lights on top of those signs on uh, Rainer Avenue. Uh, do you have a cost on those? I forgot to ask you how much that costed for that. I do, but not off the top of my head. I was it was, fair, right, could it was you very cheap in my opinion. To okay, do could that. you there send are, that to me? Maybe yeah. we should also where the no truck signs are along Broadway on all the streets that go up into the city. Maybe we should add some there also to prevent them from going up Cheney or any of the other streets. All right. Yep. All right. Thanks. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. All right. Thanks, Mike. Moving on to our city engineer, Ron Wiedemann. Good evening, Ron. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just have one item on the agenda tonight. Looking for a motion to approve the resolution approving an agreement for the Public Works Facility Rear Yard Regrading Improvement by and between the City of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois, and Austin Tyler Construction, Inc. for the amount of $92,665. This was awarded uh, by Council at the June 17th meeting. Motion will be in order. Second. We have a motion by Alder Woman Gazelle, second by Alder Person Oberlin for the approval of a resolution approving an agreement for public works facilities, rear yard regrading improvement by and between the city of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois, and Austin Tyler Construction Incorporated for an amount of $92,665. Questions or comments on the motion? Roll call, please. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Metzen? Yes. Carol Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zipiti? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Motion carried. Resolution number 1245. That's all I have unless there's any questions. Any questions of city engineer? I have a quick question for you. Um, the nominal that they put on Weber Road, is the back of it going to have any sign? Because it looks kind of odd. The signs? No, they're blank as they currently It's going to be blank? Yeah. We didn't propose anything on the back side of those. Just because the way it's curved, when you come in from southbound to north, it looks Yeah, no, we did not. I mean, that's something we can talk about later um, if we wanted to have somebody come out and etch something onto the back. But the part of the original proposal was just front, front of the signs, nothing on the back side. And the, you're, you are correct. That, that one there, you can kind of see from both directions. For the one on Broadway, you you, you can't. Yeah, I think so, we made a mistake with that. Yeah. So, so we, maybe we, something we, can, we should look into? We can come back and talk about that. Um, I can bring that to a work session. Um, I'll talk to the contractor, maybe get a rough price. Uh, some thoughts of, you know, to put on the back, like thank you for visiting or something like that, and just to get a rough price. That's so a, that, good, a good one. Thank mm -hmm. you for visiting. Okay. Ron, thank I you. had a question. I, I thought that those um, welcome monuments were going to be more on the order of what's out in front of here and of public works. Like more of a stone look versus a cast? No, they are all stone. Those are all large pieces of limestone. But they're uh, the only they're different more like these have more of a kind well, of textured feel. The, to the these edges. here we did a rock finish on them. We did not do a rock finish on the welcome signs. I thought, we wanted to, I thought the discussion was to keep it consistent. Yeah. Uh, no. The okay. the welcome signs we were gonna have as they are, to, are there, we were going to do a rock finish for the ones at our facilities to kind of show something different for the facilities, but not throughout the entire city. Okay, thanks, Ron. Uh, moving on to our community development director, Ron Metzner. Good evening, Ron. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. I have five items on the agenda. All, all five items were discussed at last Monday's um, workshop meeting. 
uh, item number seven, the first item under community development, uh, we're seeking a council motion to approve an ordinance granting a special use permit and setback variations with respect to certain real property located within the corporate boundaries of Crest Hill, the application of Midwest Industrial Funds. Uh, this is the ordinance that's been prepared to approve the special use permit for the preliminary and final PUD plans for MIF's proposed construction of a new 150,000 square foot warehouse distribution office building on the eight point acres um, that's located at the southern termination of Advantage Avenue in the industrial park. The uh, plan commission recommended unanimous approval of this uh, subject to a series of conditions. The ordinance that went out with the agenda packet has been revised. I think the city attorney distributed uh, copies of the updated ordinance, uh, both a clean version and a red light version that highlights the revisions that have been made to the ordinance since it was originally distributed last week. Um, the revisions I would classify uh, primarily as uh, minor clarifications, some typos and Scrivener's errors. Um, there were two additional conditions that were added to the list of conditions within the ordinance at the request of MIF. Um, these two conditions are the same conditions that the city included in the similar ordinance that was passed for the 577,000 square foot building. Um, that MIF is currently constructing immediately to the east of this subject property. Uh, staff and the attorney have reviewed the conditions. We don't have any issues with uh, them being incorporated in the ordinance. And uh, I, with that, I'd be uh, do my best to answer any questions you might have about the project or the ordinance. And there are representatives of MIF here tonight uh, that also can address any questions that the city council okay. may have. Any questions of Ron Metzner first from city council? Hearing none, are there any comments from the developer or the consultant? None? Okay. I would ask, for, you, have, you do have before you an ordinance, so I would ask if anyone from the audience would <coughs> like to make a comment for or against the request of MIF granting a special use permit and setback variation from the building setback of 30 feet to 15 feet um, with respect to certain real property located within the corporate boundaries of the city of Crest Hill and the rear yard parking lot, the asphalt setback from five feet to zero feet. If you would like to, any comments for or against the request Please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Your address is optional. Second request, if anyone would like to speak for or against the request of MIF for a building setback and a rear yard parking lot setback, please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Your address is optional. And a third time, if anyone would like to speak for or against the request of MIF. Let the record show that no one has approached before, before the podium. To the City Council, you, have, you do have an approval from the Plan Commission. Uh, you also have before you an ordinance granting special use permit and setback variations with respect to certain real property located within the corporate boundaries of Crest Hill, the application of Midwest Industrial Funds Incorporated. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Woman Gazelle, seconded by Alderman Dyke. Questions or comments of the motion? Roll call, please. Mark Zafiti? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Metzen? Yes. Gerald Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Motion carried, ordinance number 1990. Okay, you're all good. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the city of Crest Hill for the second time within six months. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, one, one final note on that particular project. You might recall that last Monday we did talk about a uh, development agreement, and uh, I just want that goes along with this project that the city's negotiating. Uh, the city passed a similar development agreement for the 577,000 square foot facility that's under construction. We are actively working with MIF and the city attorney, MIF's attorney, to finalize the language of that development agreement. Um, and we expect
expect to bring that back for your final review and approval at the August, the first meeting in August. I just want to make sure that that you know that didn't get lost in the process here. That that's going to be coming back your way soon. Um, the next item that we have on the agenda that we're looking for a city council motion um, is Wait. item eight. Hey, hey, Ron, hang on a sec. Should we do a separate motion on that on the contribution? No, it's not ready yet. Okay. It's coming back to the first right. meeting in okay. August. Um, the you. next item on the agenda is we're looking for a motion to approve the ordinance approving zoning setback variations for, protect, for protection bollards at 2378 Plainfield Road. Um, this again was a unanimous recommendation by the plan commission to allow the owner of the property at the southeast corner of Caton Farm Road and Route 30 to install a row of 22 bollards along, along the Caton Farm Road property line um, to protect the building from further incidents with vehicles. The building's been um, hit by vehicles on a couple of different occasions. Um, it's a pretty straightforward application. Uh, it's for safety purposes, definitely some unique circumstances that justify the approval of the variance in this case. So moved is presented. Second. Okay. Hang on. This was the plan commission recommendation also, correct? That's correct, unanimous. Are there any questions of Ron Metzner in regards to this first? Hearing none, is there anybody representing 2378 Plainfield Road? Any comments you'd like to make, sir? Please come to the podium, state your name for the record. Address is optional. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Amito Jumeta, and um, thank you for considering this application for uh, the bollards on the Cape Farm Road. We have put already, I think, 20 bollards on the other side, and it looks good. Um, so this side will just give more protection to the building. I agree with you. <laughs> After two accidents yeah. of vehicles running into that building, we need to give you a little bit more protection than you had before. That would be awesome. Thank you. I would ask anybody from City Council have any questions for the applicant. <clears throat> we are happy that you're doing that. Oh, thank you. They're also a nice neutral color, so they're not an eyesore. Thank you, thank you. We thought a lot about it, white, yellow. Yellow was too much, so gray and blue. Lime green's always a nice choice. Thank you. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's definitely a summer color. Okay, thank you. All right, for the uh, people in the audience, if there is anyone that would like to speak for or against the request of Mr. Amitaj Mehta, for the property located at 2378 Plantfield Road and the zoning setback variation for protected bollards, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, your address is optional. Second call, if anyone would like to speak for or against the appli application request from Mr. <coughs> Amitaj Mehta from 2378 Plantfield Road for a zoning setback variation for Protection Ballards, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional, and a third request. Anybody like to speak for or against your request for Protection Ballards at 2378 Plainfield Road, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium. For the City Council, you have before you an ordinance. This was approved also at the Plan Commission. You have before you an ordinance approving a offense, setback variation to the Crest Hill Zone, zoning ordinance with respect to certain real pro property, the application of AV shuttle at 2378 Plainfield Road. Motion would be in order. So moved. I already had a motion. You're right, it was already a motion. We have a motion by Alder Person yeah, Overland. The second was by Alder Mitsipiti. Questions or comments of the motion? Roll call, Karen. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Methvin? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Motion carried, ordinance number 1991. Okay, you are all set. Thank you. Okay, Ron, uh, your third request. Item nine on the agenda. We're seeking a motion from the city council to approve a resolution approving and authorizing a contract to sell the old city hall property at 1610 Plainfield Road, Crest Hill to Quick Trip Corporation. Uh, back in early June, the city council approved a letter of intent with Quick Trip for the sale of the property to them. Um, 
for the last month, the city staff and the city attorney have been negotiating with Quick Trip representatives uh, on the contract that's included in the agenda packet backup materials. Um, I would say with confidence that the terms of the contract are consistent, substantially consistent with the letter of intent that uh, the city council reviewed and approved about a m month and a half uh, ago now. Um, I did prepare a memo dated July 15th that was included in the agenda packet backup materials which, which highlights uh, some of the most important uh, key provisions in the contract. I'd be happy to address any questions that you have about that. Uh, I know Quick Trip is anxious to move forward with the due diligence on this property. Um, so hopefully uh, the city council can make a final decision on this tonight. Any questions or comments to Brad Metzner in regards to the request? Hearing none, is there anyone in the audience representing Quick Trip here? Okay. I would ask if there's anyone in the audience that would like to make comment for or against the request of the sale of the property at 1610 Plainfield Road. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, your address is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium. The City Council, you have before you a resolution approving and authorizing a contract to sell the old City Hall property, 1610 Plainfield Road, Crest Hill, to Quick Trip Corporation. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have motion by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderperson Overland to approve a resolution and authorizing a contract to sell the old City Hall property, 1610 Plainfield Road, Crest Hill, Illinois. The Quick Trip Corporation, questions or comments? I have a comment. Just to reiterate what I've said before, uh, the only good thing about this is that there is uh, a cash deal 1.65 million. I am against it for this exact uh, reasons I uh, stated before. This will be number eight gas station in the city of Castell. We are a landlock. Um, it's gonna be placed across from a retirement area, Willow Falls. And I think it's a bad choice and a bad decision to put a gas station right next to a retirement uh, community. So that's my comments. Roll call, please, Karen. Darrell Jefferson? No. Buddy Gazelle? No. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? No. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Metzen? Yes. No. Motion carried. Yeah. Motion carried resolution number 1246. 1246? Yes. That's not correct. We have no. three three no three yes and four no's. So how can motion be carried? That's correct. Where was four yeah, no's? No, we got three no's. no's. We got three no's. Three no's. There's, there's three no's. What do you see the three? Were you a no, Jennifer? I was a yes. Oh, okay, I thought you said no. No, no she said yes. Okay. Jennifer, Scott, Tina, and Joe were yes. Yes. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. What did you say? Um, the resolution number was? One, two, four, six. Thank you. Yep. Next one, Ron. Um, next one is item 10 on the agenda. At the end of last year, the city council reviewed and ultimately approved a um, commercial flagpole variation request from Reza Auto Repair. Um, with their application for their variance. They also requested consideration for a reduced or uh, relief from the city's commercial variance application fees <coughs> for this particular uh, item. Normally the city charges $1,000. Reza paid that $1,000 to move through the city's variation process. Uh, during the, the review of that, the city council seemed inclined to um, change the uh, or gave direction staff to change the city's fee structure so that commercial uh, flagpole variations uh, application fees would be reduced from 750 or from a thousand down to 250 
Um, I believe it was the city council's intent to have staff issue a refund to Reza for the difference between what they paid, $1,000, and what the fees were uh, reduced to after they applied, $250, which would mean that uh, that would be a $750 refund to Reza. Um, there's really no clear direction documented anywhere in the, the minutes or any ordinance that the city council approved regarding this refund. So in talking with the city attorney, we felt it would be appropriate to have the city council approve a resolution memorializing the council's approval of a fee run refund for Reza Auto Repair in the amount of $700. And that's what's included in the agenda packet back up for your consideration. Any questions of Ron in regards to this request? Motion would be in So order. moved as presented. Second. We have a motion by Alder Person Overland, seconded by Alder Woman Gazal to approve a resolution a pro approving a variance application fee re refund for Reza's auto in the amount of $750. Questions or comments? Roll call. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Metzen? Yes. Gerald Jefferson? Yes. Buddy Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Motion carried resolution number 1247. Okay, and the last one, Ron? Um, item 11 on the agenda, we're seeking a motion from the council to approve a resolution approving a policy for processing plan commission recommendations. As we discussed last Monday, the city doesn't have any clear policy on uh, what, if any, plan commission recommendations come forward for discussion at a workshop meeting with the city council. As a result, the def default practice has been that all plan commission recommendations uh, regardless of the complexity of the project or the, com the uh, controversial nature of the project come to a workshop meeting. Uh, the policy seeks to streamline the process and uh, clarify it a bit so that non-controversial unanimous recommendations from the plan commission uh, would automatically bypass the workshop agenda and come to the city council. Um, any recommendation that would come out of the Plan Commission that would not be a unanimous recommendation from this, the Plan Commission would uh, automatically be placed on a workshop agenda in any special use planned unit development uh, application requests would also be placed on the workshop agenda and then finally if anybody applied for an appeal to an administrative decision that a staff member made at Crest Hill regarding the administration of the zoning ordinance uh, that would also come to a workshop meeting from the council for the council's discussion. Um, it's a pretty straightforward policy, um, and we're seeking a, a motion to approve it as written. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. I, I would like to have all the recommendations come to the council um, in, a, in a workshop uh, work session, uh, just because we need to know what what we're going to be voting on before um, and, and able to have discussion about it in a work in a work session type um, scenario so I again the uh, differentiating what who, who considers what topic um, what was the term? Controversial. controversial that's up for that's a judgment call and everyone may have a different idea of what that is so I prefer to have involvement rather than um, than not. And as I stated at the work session, we talked about this. I said the same thing that although I have great respect for you, Ron, you're you're just here for a short duration, and we don't know who's coming next. And it is a really a, a judgment call, uh, and words are, are used here that aren't always used properly. So. Um, I don't. I want to see what's going on, and before I vote on it and discuss it too. So nothing against you. That'd be wonderful. I have to agree with both of you because I made that same comment. So I'm pulling my motion. I don't know what happened here. Okay, we have a motion by Alderman Jefferson. Is there a second? Second. You, Scott? Yes. We have a second by Alderman Dyke for a resolution approving a policy for. For processing plan commission recommendations, questions or comments? Kind of comment. Um, I'd like to thank you, Ron, and as well as Dave. I throw him in here too for you all's effort of trying to modernize the departments of the city and 
techn and and bring things up to speed with the rest of America. So I hope you, while you're here, you continue to do so. Roll call, please, Karen. Jennifer Methvin? No. Claudia Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? No. Tina Oberlin? No. Mark Zapiti? No. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion, motion failed. Okay, anything else, Ron? Um, if there's any other questions that might uh, pertain to community development items, I would be any happy to Any questions of community development? Now, just a quick question for you. Um, is there a reason why I'm not being copied on some of the, um, like the new business that come in, like the coffee shop, since I sit on a community development? Uh, there's really hasn't been any real need to discuss any of this thing at this point in time. If there's a need to discuss any special approvals, they may be looking for some type of um, tax assistance, rebate, because of the cost of infrastructure for that. That would be the type of thing that we would have a economic development representative's meeting to discuss before it came forward for council consideration. Thanks, Ron. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Ron. Moving on to our police department, our police chief, Ed Clark. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I do not have any items on the agenda this evening. I just wanted to give uh, council a report for the uh, what I consider the week of uh, 4th of July uh, from the 3rd to the 7th. Um, they did have 26 firework calls during that period. Uh, they did only write one citation. I wish there was more that was written. However, uh, during that period, they were very busy uh, with other calls. Extraordinary. We had 327 calls during that period. Um, and uh, <coughs> capping off with a, uh, a major investigation on Sunday morning. Um, but they did uh, 69 traffic stops, 32 traffic citations, two arrests, 56 business and house checks, and uh, six uh, stops of pedestrians for a total of 327. So it was a very busy week through that four-day period. So they were busy. We got through it, though. I thought we'd have a lot more fireworks calls. From my vantage point, from where I was at, I was uh, it was pretty, pretty loud, lots. But I've heard that uh, various areas of the city, some had more, some had less. It was kind of up and down. But uh, um, just wanted to, to give the council that information. The other thing was uh, we are planning our, what we would like to call a neighbor's night out instead of national night out. It's kind of a little different twist on it because we are the city of neighbors. I would like to have that on September 4th from 5 to 8 here at City Hall. So we're, gonna, we're in early planning and prep stages right now. We did have some leftover money from last time that we kept on to uh, on the books, so we're going to use that to start it up, and uh, I'm hoping it's going to be a great event this year. Well, Chief, I would like to say publicly I would be happy to help in any way I can. Gotcha. We will Volunteering. Take, uh, we will take you paid. up on that. <laughs> I will second that. Okay. I'm definitely happy to be a part of it as well. Awesome. Uh, yeah, as we get closer, I'll, I'll update you guys and see where we're at. But, uh, we're doing it on a different night than we have in the past. I think we're going to have a little more success in getting some of the vendors this year. So hopefully it's going to be a good time. So that's all I have this evening. Any questions of the police chief? I have oh, a yes, question chief. for you. Um, go ahead. You go this way because oh, I always not Go ahead, Claudia. Are you sure? Yeah. Um, do you remember I called you on Friday in regard to uh, some fireworks? Mm -hmm. And I sent you a screenshot of the conversation between me and the resident. I had trouble pulling that up at the time, but yeah, I did send an officer in that area. Okay, correct. correct. So while I was with one of those residents, because the complaint that I was getting is that um, her husband is a policeman. Mm -hmm. So they have the scanner. And she called again to let me know, did you call? I said, yes, I did call. So as she, so as several minutes, so there was five phone calls according to them. Mm -hmm. While I call, I was with her on the phone in the scanner. Westcom never called it to Crestel. So I have a concern with that. It doesn't matter if it's the same call. It doesn't matter if it's one or 10 times. They should report that because talking about fireworks, that is dangerous. So no matter how you want to look at it, it is danger. After all, it's against the law. So I why I'm not reporting that? Because I was like, like, are you sure did not call it? Like, yeah. Zero. So I will look into that most definitely. 
Uh, it may have been if it was a repeat call that they added it to the call and it just went right to this, the officer's terminal to say there's another call. I'm just saying that could have happened, but I'm going to take a look and I'll, I'll find out about it. But it's not Crest Hill Falls. It's the Westcom. Westcom is our They did not report it, the call. Yeah. And actually it was my call. And I will say it was around, oh, 9, 5, 10, between 9, 10, 10, 10, okay. around that time. I will look into it for sure and uh, we'll be able to pull up the CAD and see how that was dispatched out. Yeah, and that kind of makes like the resident like not to call because they feel nothing is going to happen and those are the continuous, you know, comments that I get. Right. And if the police going to go somewhere, you know, they better ticket. You know, if they're going to go out of their way, right. they should ticket uh, do that. And I also two meetings ago, exactly, I requested the speed um, cart on Borio and I know we have construction right now. Is there a way that we can move it to McGilvery and then after that to Zauza? Absolutely. You want Zauza going what direction? Towards Weber? Towards Weber. Okay. On that same note, I kind of like what they've done in Romeoville with the um, we take speeding seriously, this is your warning, mm -hmm. especially on 53. Um, Notoriously, people are doing 65 on 53, and it's a hazard. Um, I've actually started driving exactly the speed limit just to try to slow traffic down, but it's it's ridiculous. I'll take note of that, and we'll, we'll get out there. And also, Chief, um, where there's construction right now on uh, NAP and Weber, it's still like a speed zone there. It looks like... Uh, a speedway. You're saying on NAP? Coming right. down to Weber. Right the intersection. In the yeah. intersection with the construction. Yep. Nobody is following the speed limit for construction. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Ed. Thank Wait, you. I had something. Oh, I'll let the ladies go first. Um, Chief, do you know offhand if the security cameras and equipment from the old city hall have been removed yet? I do not know that for sure. Yeah, I don't Could you know. check into that? Yep. Because I don't want that being, you know, when we, the building gets leveled, uh, to lose out on the money than that equipment and anything else, anyone else that works for the city that can think of that's usable that might still be there for it to be taken out. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, isn't that was supposed to be moved to public works? Yeah, I believe there was talk of that. Correct. There was talk. Right. What happened to that? That's why I'm asking if the cameras have been removed in that. Still working on that, but we will probably get those uh, cameras in that at public works or at one of our treatment plants. Thank you. And Ron, perhaps this is more up your alley, but I was thinking the. Uh, Perennials that border the building that will probably get destroyed when it's raised. Uh, if possible, we could maybe take some of those over to Ladis Memorial Park so I don't have to raid my entire garden. Because if they're just going to get trampled, and the, you know, I'll be willing to go dig them up myself. But I don't want to do that without permission. Yeah, well, right, right now the property is still the city, so the city has the ability to um, go out there and take those plants. They are definitely going to be destroyed when right. they demolish the property and regrade the property. They're not going to try to preserve those, so I, I can't well, imagine they'd have any we, problems If we with could that. come to a decision on that, because I, I would, I mean, there's so many bare spots over at Ladis, mm -hmm. and um, I can only take so much out of my yard every year. So instead of just trampling them, if we could dig some of those up and I could bring them over there. They, they have hired a, a landscaper to work on that facility, so I could maybe have his crew help me move them over. I, I would say as long as the city council doesn't have any opposition to having those removed, um, I don't see any reason why that would be a problem. What did you say? And we can just verify with Quick Trip that they were not intending that they were purchasing perennials. So yes. I'm sure they will say no, yes, but I, I think wanna, I as a courtesy, as a courtesy since you've approved yeah. it, we can reach out to them just to let them know, yeah. and I'm sure that they'll give us and a then thumbs I'll up. talk to the landscape, see if we can get some of those moved. Tina, I, I'm sure that's something we could do. We don't need to get the landscaper to do that. Well, they, I, I've already 
I've spoken to the new regime at Ladis, and um, they've actually hired this guy that I got to do the landscaping on a, on a, on a regular basis. Okay. We're on. So perhaps he, he, I'll talk to him too. Okay. We'll get him moved one way or the other. There's about 120 day lilies around here. Um, I hate to be the bearer garden. of bad news, but we out of order, Mr. Mayor. Pardon me? We're out of order. It was a question that was asked. Right. The question was out of order, but you allowed it to go. There's about 120 day lilies just to let you know how many guys you're going to need there. All right. Oh, thanks, Ed. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the mayor's report, I do not have any agenda items. Any questions? To the city deputy city clerk is with us tonight, Karen Kozerka. Good evening, Karen. Good evening. We're looking to have a approval application for a black party on Essex Court on August Saturday, August 10th, from 12 noon to 11 p.m. They are looking to close off X6 Court to Boreo Drive. Looking for a motion. So moved. Uh, second. We have a motion by Alderman Gazelle, seconded by Alderman Jefferson for the approval of a application for a block party for Essex Street and Joshua. For oh. Joshua. Pardon me? For Joshua. Presto. For Joshua. Resto. Questions or comments? Roll call. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Jennifer Methvin? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Motion carried. Anything else, Karen? No. Any questions of city clerk's office? All right, thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving on to our city treasurer's report, our treasurer, Glenn Conklin. Good evening, Glenn. Good evening, Wayne. Happy birthday. Thank you. And the council, well, happy birthdays for you. Oh, I'm sorry, happy birthday, Tina. Rest you, you don't get one, but. First item on the agenda is I seek your approval of the list of bills issued through July 16th, 2024, in the amount of $1,166,950.96. So moved as presented. Second. We have motion by Alder Person Alderman, seconded by Alderman Kubal for the approval <coughs> of the list of bills. Questions or comments? Roll call. Jennifer Methvin? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. The uh, next two items are just informational. Uh, one is our regular and overtime payroll from June 17th. 2024 through June 30th, total $253,772.93. And our quarterly compensation time buyback period, uh, excuse me, quarterly compensation time buyback for the period of April 1st, 2024 through June 30th, 2024, total $15,422.51. That's all I have for this evening, unless anyone has any questions. Any questions of the treasurer? I have a question. Um, I know we talked today, we talked to you about um, the interims, and I find out um, that some, some of them are paid directly from government HR. So they send the bill, the statement, and we pay it. But who tracks all that? So, so there's some people that are contracted through GovHR. Correct. Some people are contracted directly. Correct. But how do we track the hours? Who is the person that tracks them? Who is the person that signs on them? In many cases, they're self-reported. How can it be self-reported? It would be self-reported. So we don't have anything, anyone approving? Like, who approves an example, the city administrator? I do. You do. And who approves Ron? I do. You do? OK. And we keep track of all that? Yes, I approve Dave's. Quran, I believe, is handled by Tony. Is that accurate, Tony? Yes. Sir. Yeah. 
and you keep a log on that? So, because I'm looking here at the list of bills and I don't see anything. So, what is it under? Like, if the council wants to track that, where do we see that? It should be under MGP, the name of the company. It's an invoice. Um, you can get an invoice for any other month. So. so, it's not on this list of bills then? So, so uh, one thing I might want to suggest is that if you have a question, um, generally prior to noon on Monday, if I, if I know that question, you officially ask for it, it's that uh, if council seeks to have a uh, copy of a bill, ask for that. Specifically, we have three different, or at least a couple different situations on how people are hired currently. But I can get a list of bills. When you're approving a list of bills, you don't see all the detail. This is a summary. We have 400 and some odd pages into our packet this evening. Mm -hmm. um, so we provide a summary. If you see a bill from Amazon that lists eight items, there may be more to it. Correct. If you see one from MGT, if you if anybody requests a specific invoice, uh, it takes a request prior to noon on a, on a Monday, and I can probably produce it for the for the evening. But the earlier, the better. I did uh, reach out. Mm -hmm to the finance department, to the girls, just so you know. So when I come here, it's because I already exhausted my options. If okay. you're asking a question on a Friday, it's very tough in the middle of an audit to get the detail that you, that you seek. OK. Before I used to ask a question an hour before the meeting, I used to get it. But I will make sure. So if it's an Amazon thing, it's a little a bit week? easier. Well, I just need to know how long, how much I need time to ask for something. Well, Claudia, there is something that you reached out to one of the girls and you did not get. You can always reach out to me, or I even CC me on the email. We'll okay. do our best as quickly, and if you'd like, we can have those prepared for you. I mean, uh, um, I'm just trying to understand where where everything is. So, there are invoices that come with um, MGT. So we have the invoices for MGT, and there's also timesheets that support the hours of the invoices. So the documentation is there. Okay, thank you. And just as you recall, MGT bought out GovHR. So if you're looking for GovHR on the list of bills, that's probably why you're not seeing GovHR because it's now MGT, correct? I found out that today when one of the girls told me. But I still wanted to know what is the process that we keep in log and who keeps track of everything. I mean, we keep track on our staff, so we need to keep on everything, on everyone. It's only fair. Okay, thanks, Glenn. Uh, moving on to unfinished business, we have nothing. Anyone? New business? Anybody? Uh, Mayor, I had mentioned to Mike earlier in the meeting about the uh, flashing lights for the truck signs, and he just sent back to me that's $150 for each one. And to go on Broadway, it's going to be like under $800. So should we just go ahead and let them do it? Or do you want to have it at work session? Or how should we go forward with it? We can't do anything tonight. It's not on the agenda. True. So, But you can put it on, if there's a consensus among the, the, the council, you can put it on for the next actual meeting, unless you would prefer to discuss it at a work session. You can do I that next week. I don't think to go to a work session. I think we just put it on next for the August. As long as there's a consensus among the council that everybody's in favor of it. Everybody okay with that for August 5th? That's fine. Just want to make sure that, you know. Thanks again, Mike. All right. Well, we'll have that as, a, as an agenda item on the 5th then. Uh, new business? Anybody else? Um, I did send an email um, requesting to have a, um, have what, a diversity and conversation and a, one about um, civil service and you know and, and I just like to make sure we're still gonna do that one. Yeah, I'll be, uh, David and I'll be talking about that in the, uh, the 
If you have something specific you want to share that you want us to research ahead of time, that'd be helpful. Uh, I, I wouldn't say specific. It's just a lot of stuff you don't see around Crest Hill that, you know, with 2024, it, you know, you wonder where it's at uh, with the rest of the world, you know. Um, hiring practices that kind of resemble the makeup of your community, things of that nature. Uh, and, and I can give you a, uh, at the time, I can give you a brief uh, explanation of how the civil service process works, too. So um, we, we really only deal with the candidates that actually show up. So if they don't show up and start the process, we, um, we're kind of limited. But that has been one of the limitations with the civil service process. Well, I, I know a lot of people getting away from that. You may get straight off on post a job and people apply, but, um, and, you know, I, I know we're, it's, it's a subject for another day, but it definitely has its flaws. Yep. I'll put it that way. All right, committee liaison reports, anybody? City council comments? Positive city council comments. Anything you'd like to share with your constituents? We'll begin with Ward 1 this evening, Alderman Dyke. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to wish you a happy birthday. Unfortunately, you're here at the meeting. You know, you're not out with your family and that. But uh, happy birthday, and that's all I have to report. Thank you. Alderwoman Nutley. Hi, good evening. Um, so in surveying my area after a couple nights of storms, we did see quite a few tree branches down. Um, luckily, it doesn't seem to be any severe damage to anywhere. Um, I do worry about some of the trees that are overgrown on the beltways or the, the, the area between the drive or the, between the sidewalk and the road. Um, there are quite a few that are overdue for maintenance and um, they need to be looked at because they're gonna be a hazard if we have another storm. Okay, if you, want to, if you have a list, it'd be great if you could put, put a list together and give it to Public Works. I'd be happy to provide that. And hopefully, the prediction tonight is not as bad as they're saying, so there won't be any more damage. Alderman Jefferson. Nothing at this time. Alderman Gazal. Yes, just want to announce uh, Meet at the Park this coming Wednesday. This is going to be uh, held at Renaissance uh, Crossing Park at Zauza drive at 6 p.m. We will have uh, hot dogs, refreshments, and a lot of goodies for the kids. Uh, hope to see everyone there. And uh, I want to thank uh, some of the residents. I see here many faces. I um, appreciate you here. Uh, and also to my future campaign manager that I see him sitting there, Ethan. <laughs> um, I call him campaign manager because he's into a lot of politics. And for you being here tonight, it means the world to me. Thank you so much. And uh, happy birthday to Tina Oberlin. This coming Saturday, I knew it was your birthday, and I'm going to make sure to say it publicly. So happy Thank birthday, you. Tina, and happy birthday to the mayor. Thank you. Other person, Oberlin. Well, I'm glad to see another year. That's all we can say. Happy to see another year. and. Um, Alderman Spitty. Uh, just want to wish you both a happy birthday, and uh, it's also my father's birthday, so. Today? Happy birthday, Dad. Happy birthday. Today was? Today. Alderman Kubal. Nothing else to add other than happy birthday, all. Okay, public comment. Anyone like to address City Council, please step to the podium, state your name for the record. Your address is optional. Sherry? Hello, I'm Sherry Williams, and I just wanted to say that I'm happy that um, we were able to sell the old city hall. However, it's another gas station. I'm just a little bit concerned that it seems like that's the only thing that we seem to be able to attract here at Crest Hill. 
So I'm not really sure that's a, the best location for it. I really would like to see us get some other kind of businesses in Crest Hill. We are a city of neighbors, not the city of gas stations. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Anybody else? <clears throat> Uh, to our city attorney, is there a need for an executive session, Mike? Uh, yes, there is uh, for 2C1 and 2C11. So moved. And Mr. Mayor, can I make a quick statement right quick? Um, our first meeting of the month, there was a lot of, there was a lot of tension in the room. And in my response to the tension that was made, I made a statement accusing Operating Engineers Union 150 of not being diversified in their tradesmen. Uh, I found out, and the gentleman is here tonight, and I said it, and I'm gonna say it again. I, I apologize because I was incorrect. Local 150 has made major strides in diversifying the trade uh, that they uh, that their membership are, are governed by. And I will, if I misspeak, I'm man enough to say when I'm wrong, and I got 13 to stand on when I'm right. So I apologize to you and anyone I may have offended. I would like to make a comment as well. <clears throat> Just to echo with what uh, Darrell have said, um, last meeting was uh, a tough meeting. It wasn't accepted and it was uh, most of it unfair. I did wrote uh, a statement, but I'm gonna choose not to read it tonight. Um, I did reach out to the union representative, which is sitting here in the audience. Um, I know he was supposed to say more words, but I'm gonna say him. Change your mind, that's okay. I un totally understand. Um, that's how government is. We don't agree all the time. We disagree, we agree. But in the long term is, I always have the faith and the best intention to do my best, not just for the residents of Crest Hill, so as for the employee. If I made a mistake by stating as a word that was taken out of contact, I apologize, but I know in my heart I have given my all. I have given my all, I give 100, over 100% 100 on a daily basis to the resident, to the city, and also to the staff. Um, the reason why I reach out to, um, to Aaron, if you don't mind me as telling you Aaron, um, because I always feel there is room for um, to improve on both sides. You know, my statement that I made was very angry, very disappointed, very hurt by it as well. Especially since my words were taken out of context, constantly, both meetings. My intention was never to go after the staff. My intention was to show that the leadership is not there. All I want is for the council to be part of the memorial service, and I felt that we should be part of it. And why pay over time? And any of you can go ahead and listen to the media and watch me, and I know some of you have watched them. That was never an intention of our staff. I'm thankful for the staff. I think I have proven that over and over. But unfortunately, the leadership is really bad here. We have management where, like the city administrator, he should be handling all these things. He should know what's going on around. But what happened, it happened. I'm a big girl, I can take it. But I'm glad I reached out to Aaron and I'm reached out that we have a very tough conversation in the end. We disagree a lot. In the end, we agree. He stated to me during a meeting that we are cut from the same slack and I know I said to him, no, we're not. But I take that back because I think we both are a fighter. We are a fighter for what we want. 
And the, one of the other reasons why I reached out to him, because I think we should build the bridge, not burn it. We should not set up each other to fail. If we fall down, we should get up, stand up, brush it off, and do the best that we can to make the best decision for the city. We came to agreement that we're gonna work together instead of work against each other. We might not agree all the time, but we're gonna do it in the proper way behind closed doors or reach out to me personally, because I'm a big girl, I can take it. It is said that I thought that was set up and it's said that some of you knew about it and choose to say silence. But again, if I made a mistake, I will say I made a mistake. Maybe that one word should have ne never said, but that was never my intention. In my father's memory, that was never my intention. That's my statement, but thank you, Erin, for coming and sit with me for two hours, 15 minutes, and I would also want to thank you, Darrell, for um, being here with me that day and for standing up for with me last meeting. And so as you, Mr. Conklin, I appreciate your comments. And for the people that know me, they know in my heart who I am. Thank you. Okay, well, I did have a motion for an executive session by all the person Overland. Is Second. There, oh, did, do you wanna say something, Aaron? Can I please make a public comment? Sure. Good evening, my name is Aaron Jerian and I am the Local 150 Business Representative for Crest Hills Public Works as well as clerical members in Public Works, the Police Department, the Building Department, and the Finance Department. It's the same sentence I started my uh, speech two weeks ago with. Uh, two weeks ago I stood in this very same spot and made a lengthy statement. Since then I've had the opportunity to meet with Alderman Gazal and Alderman Jefferson. We did have a lengthy, two hours and 15 minutes, I didn't know it was at the time. Uh, and tough, but I feel necessary conversation. I want to express my appreciation to both older persons for taking the time to meet with me, uh, and I want to thank them for their kind words tonight. I'm looking forward to working with everybody in the city council in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Aaron. Aaron like speaks highly of the, the gentleman that you are coming here. It's not easy. I know that it wasn't easy the first time, and I know it's not easier this time to come in and and make a statement. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to amend one thing you said, Claudia. Though. When we fall down, we should help each other. That's what we should be doing. When we fall down, we should help each other, not kick each other. All right, we do have a motion for an executive session by Alder Person Overlin. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Woman Metfin. Roll call, please, Karen. Mark Zabitti. Yes. Joe Fulwell. Yes. Scott Dyke. Yes. Jennifer Metfin. Yes. Gerald Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazelle? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. All right, we'll be going into executive session at 8.23 p.m.